Good morning, everyone. Today is Sunday, and I'm already dressed for church. And right now, I'm just having my coffee, and I'm about to do some reading. We still have, like, I got it early today. We still have three hours before church starts. Church starts at 11. So, I didn't vlog anymore yesterday because... Savannah and I, we went to bookstores, and you guys have seen us do that many and many of times, so I decided not to vlog that. Um, I did get some more books, so maybe I'll show you guys in a later vlog. I don't know. But anyway, yes, got some more books, and we went to the grocery store, and we went to grab something to eat, and then, okay, what I should have vlogged was, okay, as you guys know, Savannah is vegan. Well, if you didn't know, my youngest daughter, Savannah, she's vegan. Anyway, so she always tries to find different vegan places or places that have vegan foods, desserts, ice creams, you name it, right? So she found this place called Salt and Straw. It's downtown. It's a ice cream place that has vegan options. So she found this place maybe like last year sometime and she keeps going on and on about how the vegan ice cream is so good there it tastes so good and blah 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 whatever right so we finally went y'all and i'll put it up on the screen so y'all will know i'm not joking just in case you do not have a salt and straw ice cream place in your area so you go in and it's a cute little area downtown and it just looks really nice and they let you sample all of the ice creams, right? There's a lot of different flavors. And I knew this going in because I looked on the menu, but I'm thinking, okay, if they put it in ice cream, it has to be good, right? So the first thing that I tried, I'll put it up on the screen, strawberry honey balsamic with black pepper. And I'm thinking, that's different, okay? Let me try it. Give us a sample. I just took a little bit. The black pepper was overwhelming and it one thing didn't go with the other in my opinion so I couldn't even finish it and there's like these little openings that you can drop the spoon in because it's a metal spoon I don't know if they wash them or throw them away I don't care whatever so then I tried another flavor and that was and once again I will put it on the screen so you know I'm not making this up pear and blue cheese now, I don't know what possessed me to try that, but once again, I'm thinking, oh, maybe it's something that I don't know. Y'all, when I tell you for a split second, I almost forgot that I was inside a building, an establishment, a restaurant, because my knee-jerk reaction was to spit. I didn't. I didn't. But... I wanted that nasty concoction out of my mouth so bad that the tiny little bit that I had in my mouth, I just, I had to, I, I had to let it go down and then I threw the rest of that spoon away. She did give us like some just vanilla for a chaser and that helped, but y'all, do you have a salt and straw in your area? And what do you think? So I did end up getting ice cream, but I got something that is familiar to me. I'm like, I'm not getting any of the weirdness. So well, I got the pistachio with saffron and rose water. That was okay. Um, it wasn't nasty, but it, it was okay. Will I get it again? Probably not. And then, because I got two scoops, I got the sea salt with caramel ribbons and i've had like salted caramel before but that one tasted like they put equal amount of salt to the ice cream shine loved it me not so much there's just different flavors there there is a and i didn't try this because after those two that i tried i just couldn't anymore with the weird ones so I tried to stick to something that sounded normal so there's just different ice creams there I mean there's a honey lavender a cinnamon snickerdoodle there's one that has olive oil in it which I was like no y'all but the waffle cones there are so good it tastes like 
but it's just so good. It's really good. The waffle cone, I could have ate that and just been happy and not had the ice cream. And there, like I said, there's vegan options there for Savannah. So if I ever do go back again, if I ever do, I think I'm just going to get the vegan ice cream because I tasted hers. It was like mint chocolate chip. It was so good. It was normal. It was just, it, it tasted good. It didn't have all this weird extras. So yeah, um, that's what I should have vlogged. But yeah, do you guys have a salt and straw? What do you think? Because ours, and the line is always so long. I don't get it. Just like I don't get people that like In-N-Out. In-N-Out is disgusting. And that's just my personal opinion. It tastes like nothing. That's just me. So, yeah. All right, so I am just finishing up. I, I'm already ready, but just doing a few finishing touches, trying to decide what perfume to wear. Oh my goodness, my closet is a mess, you guys. So don't look over there as you guys look over there. Anyway, so I'm going to wear my Perry Ellis. I'm almost out and y'all, I don't think I'll be getting this again. I love the smell of Perry Ellis perfume since my 20s when I first discovered it. And it smells so good, or should I say it used to smell so good. I know Perry Ellis died years ago, but I don't know when it started. But within the last 10 years, I was gonna say the, the I was gonna say the flavor. I don't eat perfume, you guys. I don't drink perfume. Anyway, within the last 10 years, maybe, I think the smell has changed. I don't know why sometimes people change the formula of their perfumes. Maybe it's better for them cost effective wise. But for us, the ones who really like it and like the scent that you're used to buying, I don't know. It it just changed and it doesn't smell the same anymore. And I tried to think, well, is it just me? You know, am I smelling something different? But I asked a few people who, of my friends who love Perry Ellis as well. And they're like, no, I thought I was the only one. Something changed. And I'm like, yeah, it just smells really different. And yeah, I've had this a while, you know, but when this is gone, I am done with Perry Ellis. So that's what I have on today. I am running low on eternity for women. I need to get some of that. I have Escape. I have Daisy by Marc Jacobs. And I need to get me some more of that. That smells so good. Aqua Day, Giorgio Armani. Anyway, um, that's what I'm wearing today. In case you were wondering, cause you asked, right? So let me grab a few more things and get ready to head out the door. It's Wednesday afternoon I am on my lunch break and y'all what a day I have had already I get up this morning for those of you who don't know on Wednesday I work full-time but I work from home but on Wednesdays I go in for half a day and do what I need to do right so today's Wednesday I got up before my alarms yes you heard me alarms because Sometimes a girl needs more than one to get up. I can't just hear the alarm and pop right up. Anyway, I got up before, turned them all off, and I was just in a good mood. 
doing my devotion and listening to my gospel music and I get in the shower and I'm just grooving, enjoying the day. Like today's going to be a good day. Today is going to be a wonderful day for God has washed my sins away today. And I was just singing, you know, praising my little heart out, you know, and yeah, I know I can't sing y'all anyway. So I was just happy in a good mood, getting dressed, taking my time because since I got up before the alarm went off, I had so much time to do whatever, right? So I'm dressed. I even had some time just to sit down and just like, ooh, whatever, before I had to leave. So then it was time to go. And I grabbed my purse, opened it up, looked for my keys. They weren't in there. And that's when it started. So I'm thinking, why are my keys not in my purse? I'm the type of person that I don't misplace things like that when it's really important. I put things back where they belong. I'm just that type of person. So I normally, and I know we're all human, I normally would not have put the keys someplace else. So I empty the contents of my purse, dump it all on my bed, and then I take my work bag with my laptop in it and whatever, and I'm emptying that out. And then I go look like, in, I don't know why I went towards my closet, and then I look down and there was like my dirty clothes hamper, and something told me to look in there. And I'm like, why would I put it in my dirty clothes hamper? You know, that's, that's crazy. So I'm looking all over the room, I'm opening up drawers, I'm tearing stuff apart because by this time it was getting late and so I'm like I need to go or I'm going to be late so I ended up texting my manager and I told her I said hey I can't find my keys I'm gonna be late and she's lol you know I hope you find them soon the last time I seen them was when on Sunday and I'm thinking did I leave them in the door does someone come by and grab them are they waiting for us to leave and then come in I mean all kinds of thoughts right because where are my keys if not in my purse. That's the only place I put them, in my purse, right? So I go in the living room and I'm thinking, did I sit down, did they fall in between the couch cushions? So I'm checking the couch. I flipped the couches upside down. I took the rockers and I, you know, flipped them upside down. I'm looking, and I'm, I look, I'm looking in the kitchen in the drawers, cause I don't know, I'm just looking for my keys. Where would I put the keys? Why, why would it be in the drawers? I don't know. So at that point, I'm like, okay, so, Cheyenne had already left for work and Savannah was on her way home. I mean, on her way to work. And I'm thinking, okay, I can use my spare and go to work and look for them when I get back. However, when I get back, I won't be able to get in the house. So text Cheyenne. She's like, no, mom, I didn't see your keys. I didn't see, you know, don't you, don't you have it in your purse? Exactly, you know, it should be in my purse. Savannah was like, I don't know where they are. You know, I haven't seen it. You know, shouldn't it be in your purse? You would think. So she finished getting ready for work while I'm tearing the house apart. I mean, I even looked in the garbage in the house and I'm just tearing things up. The house looked like it had been ransacked. I go back in my room, back like towards my bathroom area and then something told me again, look in the dirty clothes hamper. And I'm thinking, it would never be in there, never. Why would I put it in there? So I pass it up again and then I was about to, honestly guys, I was grabbing some gloves because I was about to go look in the garbage cans outside thinking maybe, you know, when we ordered food on Sunday that, I don't know, I accidentally put it in there. I don't know. I don't know. But I was about to do that because those keys were MIA. It was like it just disappeared. And I felt really frustrated because like I said, you guys, I don't usually, I don't usually... I think I had something on my mouth. If you guys seen it when I was talking, I apologize. Anyway, so I'm in my room and I start looking through all the stuff that I dumped out. I'm telling you, drawers were open, clothes was on the floor. I had books spread out everywhere. I mean, underneath the bed and just, I took my, I took my sheets off my mattress. I like took them off because I'm like, okay, well maybe I had them on my bed and they got pushed to the side or something because one side of my bed always has my Bible, my laptop and just whatever on it. And I'm thinking, well maybe it's there or whatever. So I tore apart my bed, couldn't find it. And then I go back to, towards the bathroom again. And I'm like, you know what? Let me just look in these jean skirts over here because I don't know. Then I grabbed one of my jean skirts and I looked in the pocket 
guess what I found y'all? Yeah, I found my keys. Then I remembered that two days before that, yeah, on Monday, I went to check the mail and I have to go down the street like four houses down or whatever. So I do lock the house when I go walk to get the mail. Came back, unlocked the door. For some reason, I put the keys in my pocket and not my purse. And then later on when I changed, I kept it in the pocket. You would think I would have felt it all that time. I don't know, I don't know, can't explain it. But yeah, I feel like as I was ransacking the house and making a mess of everything, a complete mess, and I'm praying like, Lord, please help me find these keys because I need to get to work. You know, I can get there, but I need to get back in. I feel like he was telling me the whole time. Every time I passed by, I, I got the sense of, look at this, look at this. But no, no, not me. So yeah, sometimes you gotta listen to that still small voice, that little voice that's nudging you or whatever, and usually I do. But I thought, why would I have it why would I have it in a skirt pocket? Why? I would have put it back right where it was. Yeah, no, I did not. So then got to, um got in my car, gas light went on. So I had to go get gas. And then I had to, you know, just take a minute and just close my eyes and just pray and just like, Lord, I need to be calmed down because, you know, things happen for a reason. I found my keys and I don't know, maybe the Lord was having me avoid an accident or I don't know, things happen for a reason. Maybe it's just me that needs to put my keys away when I come back in the house in the proper spot, not keep it in my pocket. I don't know. Anyway, so... With my job, at least, you know, if we are late, we can, you know, work a little bit later. So I have that leeway. So once I just took a minute to like pray and just calm down and, you know, it's not that bad, girl. It's not that bad. Then I was able to drive calmly to work. I was late. I will be working late today, but it could have been worse. I could have been an hour late or whatever. I was only 15 minutes late. So I will be working 15 minutes later than my normal time just to make sure I get my eight hours. So yeah, interesting morning. And then when I got to work, because my job, they provide coffee and teas and hot chocolate and the creamers and all that good stuff, right? Not the fancy stuff, but you know, just the good stuff, which, you know, a lot of places don't, but they do. So I guess they had refilled everything. Usually the hazelnut and the, what's that, the French vanilla, the French vanilla and the vanilla ones and the caramel ones, you know, those go quick, the coffee pods, the K-pods, right? And I'm looking in the drawer and I'm like, oh, okay, let me do this caramel one. So as I'm grabbing the caramel one, put it in the Keurig and then here comes a coworker and me and her are not that close. We see each other, whatever, but you know, we're just making little chit chat. That way it won't be awkward in the break room. So she's heating up some pastries and I'm like, ooh, that smells really good when she took it out. And she's like, thank you. My coffee was finished and then I get the creamer and I'm mixing everything up. Then I get a towel to, I splash to some cream or whatever. I'm just cleaning up my mess. And then I always take out the pod before I leave out of respect for the next person, even though everyone doesn't do that same thing. So I took out the pod and I didn't pay attention to it, right? I tasted the coffee just to make sure I had enough creamer in it, y'all. Tell me why it was a blueberry flavored coffee. Now call me crazy, but blueberries don't belong in coffee. I am, I've never heard of it before. I have never drank blueberry coffee. And then I looked at the coffee pot and it said Mountain View blueberry something or whatever. And I'm like, this is disgusting. So I had to dump the whole thing out because apparently I didn't pay attention when I thought I'd grab the caramel one and I made another one. But blueberry coffee? Ew, who, who drinks that? I finally made my coffee, the caramel one that they had. So yeah, blueberry coffee. I mean, have y'all heard of that? Who drinks blueberry coffee? And it's funny because when I told her her pastry smelled good, I think I was smelling the blueberry coffee. Maybe it was mixing in with the coffee because it did smell good. It smelled really good. But to drink it, mm -mm. that's like drinking peach coffee or watermelon coffee. Ew, gross, gross. Blueberries and coffee? A blueberry flavored coffee? That's disgusting. 
Anyway, I've been talking for 12 minutes, y'all. Let me go grab something for lunch and then enjoy the rest of my lunch day. My lunch day. My lunch and then, yeah. I'm calm now, you guys. I'm perfectly calm. You know, I'm a whole lot better. But I'm not looking forward to cleaning my room or straightening up the living room or I'm not even gonna show you guys. I did dig in the kitchen garbage, but it wasn't that much, thank God, you know, cause I didn't wanna, it, it, it just could have been worse. But yeah, I didn't come over here and, you know, tear things up, but my living room, the couch is still flipped upside down, the big one. And then the rockers are turnt, are like just skinny wampus. <laughs> and my room, yeah, we won't even begin to talk about how my room looks right now. Yeah. So after work, it's gonna be fun. Fun, fun, fun.
So it's after work and it feels so good in the house. We are going to be getting triple digit weather for the next three days, maybe four, I think. And I turned my air on super early just so I can cool it down. And yes, you guys do hear my fan. I have my fan on. And yes, it feels so good in here. It's kind of chilly, but I'm okay. Because I can always put a hoodie on or a sweater or something like that. But heat is kind of hard to get comfortable with heat. So yeah, um, in the mornings, I usually like to open my door to let the fresh air in. But today, I was not about to play that game. As soon as I opened the door, it wasn't even a couple of minutes. It was a couple of seconds and it was like, oh no, we're not doing this. So closed the door and turned the air on. So when I was younger, my cousins, we would all stay at my grandmother's house when our parents were at work during the day, right? So I vaguely, I kind of remember my grandmother like during the summer if the sun is just like beaming in certain areas of the house in the afternoon or whatever. I remember her closing the blinds or the curtains or whatever to keep it cool. And yes, it darkens up the house or whatever, but you know, it helps to keep it cool. So I remember her doing that. So fast forward to now, me as an adult on the days that like today that it's going to be over well over a hundred degrees. I didn't open up my blinds or my curtains and I take that back. My blinds are open over there but that's because I opened them up a little bit because I was straightening up in the kitchen and I didn't want to turn on the light. So I'm actually going to close it you know when I get up but I'm saying all that to say so sometimes I will keep everything closed because my house faces north but at a certain time during the day on the south side of my house, the sun just like beams in. And here in the living room, it will get very warm. So, and Savannah will do that in her room as well. She'll close the blinds if she's home throughout, during the day because her room gets a lot of sun. The other day, I had these blinds and the curtains closed, right? And I've done it before many of times, but I guess Cheyenne just now paid attention to it. So she came home from work and I'm just sitting here on the couch watching TV, scrolling on my phone or whatever, right? And she's like, mom, you know, for the past few days, you had the blinds closed when I came home. Are you okay? I'm like, what do you mean, am I okay? She's like, you're not depressed, are you? I started laughing. I'm like, girl, I'm not depressed. I'm trying to avoid having a $200 smut bill. So there's no depression about it. I'm trying to keep my costs down. So yeah, she thought I was depressed because I was here in the dark basically because she knows during the day I'll open up the blinds or you know just to let the light in. I like that or whatever. But on these hot, extremely hot days, mm -mm, I will sit here in the dark, in the cool. Just thought I'd share that with you guys. I know some people say to in the summer to keep your thermostat at a certain setting that way you won't have to heat up your house it won't take as long not to heat it up but it won't take as long to cool your house down in the summer and heat it up for the winter something like that but at night I turn my air conditioner off unless we are having like a heat wave completely then I'll keep it on during the night because nothing is worse than waking up in a puddle of sweat. It's horrible. So I'll keep it on during those times. But most of the time, yeah, at night when we get ready to go to bed, air conditioner goes off. We are using our fans. And then in the morning, I'll turn it back on. It's been working. Um, I tried it both ways and I don't see a huge difference in my bill. So let me know what you do, what works best for you, because for me, it's no huge difference. Anyway, so yeah, I thought I'd share that with you. My daughter thought I was depressed because I'm sitting here in the dark, but not really the dark, trying to keep the cool in my house. <laughs> so yeah, y'all the other day, I was reading something and actually let me show you guys what happened so i'm getting older i have the 
when you are trying to read something small print, I'm doing this right, trying to adjust and see. So I have a pair of readers that I got from like Walmart or Target or something like that. I don't know. Um, the like the lowest prescription available. So I was posting checks here at my desk. There was an area that had like tiny little writing and like I could not see the numbers. So I have my readers right here, which I bring around the house. I put it in my purse when I take to work because I I'm at the point where I need them, right? So I'm sitting here and I have the glasses on and y'all look, can you tell? Yeah, <laughs> the lens fell out. So, and it's broken. Let me see if you guys can see. Yeah, it's broken right there. So see, it's broken. So I don't know how that happened, but like I said, probably because I take this pair and I throw it in my purse. I have a case for it, but it's a soft case, not a hard case. But I'll put it in my purse when I go to work. I will put it in my room, in the living room. I'll just bring it around the house and I'll just toss it, whatever, right? Because this was like, what, two bucks? So I'm like, I'm gonna need another pair of readers. Y'all, I'm officially old. I'm officially old. There, I said it, I admit it, whatever. I'm officially old because y'all, I have three pairs of readers, which I'm gonna get a fourth pair to keep in my purse. But here are my readers for when I am here working. Gotta clean them up with a little smudge there. And then when I'm here on the couch reading an actual book, not my Kindle, because on the Kindle you can adjust the font to make it bigger. Yeah. So here on the couch, I have these pair. And when I'm reading in my room, I have these ones. These are really small, but I don't wear them out. So I know they probably don't fit my face because I have a round face. I don't, they don't fit my face as well, but no one's not gonna see me in them outside. I mean, you guys are, but you know, I only use them to read because these are not for distance. Can't see in these. So yeah, y'all, I have a reader in every area of my house where I usually am. Yeah, I'm old. And the ones that's here in my living room, I just now keep in my tray that's here next to me on the couch. And also I have, I have these all around the house. Y'all, I am, Carmex is my crack, I know. I probably should use something else because I know for a fact Carmex puts stuff in it which makes you use it constantly, but nothing else works for me so yeah y'all didn't ask but now you know and yes there's my fan good afternoon hello so I'm about to complain so get ready I'm just letting you know right now I'm about to complain and there's nothing I can do about this we all have to excuse me we all have to do this you guys have to do this if you own a car and you probably know where I'm going I complain about this every year I feel like to you guys but I feel so strongly about it. So it's that time of year for me to renew my registration, right? And it infuriates me that every single year we have to pay to tell them, oh, I still own my car. How about, can I go online and check the box? Yes, that I still own the car. Why do I have to give you hundreds of dollars to say I own my car. Or better yet, how about I let you know when I don't have it anymore? Let's do that. Other countries, they register their car one time when they get it, and that's it. What the heck, America? What the heck? And it's like all hundreds of dollars. It makes me so mad. Why is registration like so expensive? I don't know if when they started doing this, I don't even want to research it because I don't care because they shouldn't have did it anyway. When they started doing it, I don't know if registration per year was $50, $100, $20. I don't know. I don't know the history behind that. But how come the newer cars, and my car is older now, it's a 2018, but how come newer cars, the registration is so expensive? Why? Make that make sense. I don't get it. Someone explain to me. Why does the government or whoever needs hundreds of dollars every year to say we own our car? <sighs> okay, that's it until next year, because I'm sure I will continue to complain. And there's nothing I can do about it because 
if you're driving with expired tags, you know, you'll get pulled over and you'll get a ticket or your car taken away, depending on who the officer is or whatever. So, yeah. Okay. Hmm. How y'all day going? A sticker. A stinking sticker. A sticker. Make it make sense.